Bernardo Uta was not a novice, but he was not a monk. He was a warrior. He had sworn an oath to Pope Julius III and the entire line of popes. Uta's oath, as a member of Armadei, was to protect the unquestioned dominance of the papal throne, even if his life would be lost in the process. His army of sainted soldiers declared that they were imposing the wrath of God, and they had fought for the church hierarchy for decades, ever since heretics like Martin Luther and Philip Melanchthon challenged Pope Leo X and the practices of the church in Rome. Members of Arma Dei swore an oath of allegiance to the papacy, as did Uta when he joined the army of disciples in 1548. His charge in this case was to find the thing called the Paletti Notebook, full of heresies from a scandalous gospel written long ago and letters and sketches by the men of Florence artists, writers, even once famous politicians, who dared to promote ideas contrary to church teaching. Uta was instructed to find it and destroy everything in it by fire. With the unwitting help of a winemaker at an inn near San Marco Monastery, Uta had gained entrance to the monk's cells, identified the one where Pietro Paletti lived, and ended the novice's life in exchange for the apostasy of anti-church writings he had hidden beneath the stones of his chamber. Along the way, Uta had made slight changes in the plan that Armadei had given him. Rather than destroy the notebook and all its contents, he decided he would deliver them himself to Pope Julius III, in return for which he expected to reap more papal benefits than he could otherwise accumulate in his entire lifetime the Pope would smile generously upon being presented with a thing called the Paletti Notebook, especially the sacrilegious Gospel of Matthias, and Uta would be a witness to the Pope putting the devil's concoction to the flames. But first he had to kill the monk called Pietro Paletti, an act he carried out with ruthless violence late one evening after the bells of Compline had sounded in the monastery. Retrieving the collection called the Paletti Notebook, he ran from the cell and down the hallway, exiting the monastery grounds by leaping over a wall and down onto the ground outside it. The following morning, Uta spent some time examining the contents of the leather folio he now possessed. He saw a sketch of a naked woman, one that displayed much more than his imagination would have allowed, and a tiny da Vinci etched in the corner. He saw a letter that was an ongoing harangue against the Pope with the abbreviation Che Borgia at the bottom. Uta saw a drawing of what he thought would be God, but the brain of the creature was scrambled. Then he opened the rag that bundled the old text that he saw the night before. Symbols that looked like crossed lines, arches, and circles filled the page. Uta could not make any sense of it, but he could tell from the yellowed parchment that what he held in his hands was very old. Leaders of Armadei had told him that such a thing would exist and that it would appear just this way, so Uta did not need to be able to translate from Coptic to Italian to know that this was the rumored lost gospel of Matthias. He closed everything up, pulled on his cloak, and headed for the stables. He arranged to buy a horse that he could ride to Rome, and it was already saddled up when he arrived. The days he spent traveling to Rome were uneventful, Uta stayed to himself and avoided busy roads because he didn't want to encounter someone who had evil intent. Being robbed or assaulted would be a problem, but losing the Paletti notebook would be a catastrophe. Not only did he want to please the leaders of Armadei, he also wanted to win the favor of the Pope for his bravery and cunning in bringing this particular heresy to destruction. He reached the Apostolic Palace in mid-morning and approached the gate. He was stopped by the guards and ordered to turn around and leave. He knew no one at the palace, nor how any of the important people looked, but he saw a man in an expensive robe with a long jeweled chain hanging from his neck, exiting through the gate. Sire, Uta said, bowing low and beseeching a moment, I am from Armadei, he began, but was immediately shushed by the elegant man, who grabbed Uta by the elbow and pulled him aside. Who are you? the man asked. And why are you here? The urgency in his voice convinced Uta that the man recognized the name Armadei, but he also didn't seem pleased to hear it uttered in a public place. I am Bernardo Uta, a soldier in... But the man put his fingers to his lips to make Uta quit speaking. 
Looking around, the man then asked Uta, Are you here on an important mission? 